Thank you for watching Back Porch Wisdom with Pastor Rob Wynn. We pray that this weekly broadcast will be a blessing to you. And now here is Pastor Rob Wynn with today's message. Hi, this is Pastor Rob Wynn. I want to welcome you to Back Porch Wisdom. Last week we were talking about nothing is greater than God. And we made the point that you know the will of God because in the book of Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, you find out that the garden was created for man and he, he had prepared that garden for man and then he placed man in that garden and he gave him dominion over and he told him to keep it and to uh, guard it. And so you find out that the garden typifies the abundant and peaceful life that God intended for His man. And then you see in Revelations 21 where there's a new heaven and a, and a new earth coming down out of heaven from God. And you find out that where, there, where, where this is, He takes away all the, the turmoil, all the confusion, all the lack of peace, all the lack of joy from man. And so you understand then that in between the Garden of Eden and the uh, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, that God's not really in control of this earth. That, that there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of killing and stealing and destroying. And he says that Jesus said that the devil kills, steals, and destroys, and he's the one that brings life and brings it more abundantly. And so I want to make this, I'm make it, making this first point is nothing really is greater than God. Because you see that when, when, when God sent Jesus to the earth, He brought Him in through a, through a virgin. And you find out that He was able to cause that man, Jesus Christ, to live a sinless life. And He was able to, to cause Jesus to agree to be man's sacrifice for all the sins of mankind. And then you find that when he died, before he died, actually, Jesus said that, he said, no man takes my life, but I lay my own life down. And so he, he prophesied his own resurrection from the dead. And so once he paid the price for mankind, then God sent the Holy Ghost into the belly of the earth and He raised up Jesus from the dead. And so then, then you know nothing's greater than God. The resurrection from the dead is the, cent is the focal point for Christianity. Christianity can be proved by the rule of law that God is who He said He was, Jesus is who He said He was, and He can do what He says He can do. And so... Making that point, nothing's greater than God, then we make the point is God never changes. He's always the same. So whatever He did yesterday, He'll do today. Whatever He did today, He'll do forevermore. And so you can count on God. Jesus is forever God in heaven, in the flesh, and He's praying for you. You find out in Hebrews, the chapter 1, starting in about verse 2 where, where he says that he wants to speak through his son. He's through speaking through the prophets in the Old Testament. He's wanting to speak to you in a son. And then you find out there are seven points that make Jesus different than any other man that's ever lived on the face of the earth. Number one, he inherited everything. He, is, he owns everything. Number two, He created everything. Number three, He's the brightness of the glory of God. In other words, brightness of His glory means he, He's manifested Himself uh, for us with power and with His goodness or everything that's beneficial in all its effects. And then you find out that He's... Uh, the express image of God, which means He's showing us exactly what God's nature is all about. You know, in Matthew 7, He says, a good tree has got good fruit. A bad tree has got good fruit. 
bad fruit. And so you know that God's good all the time because Jesus was good all the time. And we know that number uh, five is, is that He's upholding everything by the power of His Word. And then you find that when He had purged our sins or He had totally eradicated our sins so that we could be a righteous being, that He was taken up into heaven and He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And He's ever living to make uh, intercession for us. And it says when He prays for you and you come to Him, that He's able to save you to the uttermost. This is what makes God uh, greater than anybody. Is this because He can save you to the uttermost. Then you find that the last point is, is that He's inherited a name that is above every name. One of these days, every person and every devil will confess that Jesus is Lord. Do you realize that in, in the sinner's prayer that He doesn't ask you to believe that He's Savior. He asks you to believe that Jesus is Lord and that He's raised from the dead. And then He asks you to believe with your heart that you've been made righteous. And, and then you're saved because you've made a confession of it. Listen, I've run into people all the time where they don't know they're saved or, or they, they believe what I just talked about with Jesus, but they've never asked Him in their heart. And so, listen, there is no silent prayer. There is no unspoken prayer. Jesus said, when you pray, say. And so if you're going to get born again, you're going to have to ask Jesus into your heart. God's great enough to cause you to become a new creation in Christ Jesus and cause you, the, the old sinful nature, which is the nature of the devil, is gone. And the new nature that's come is God. And He's able to make that happen for you. And so I want to thank you for tuning in to Back Porch Wisdom today. And, uh, and I want to pay, pray a prayer with you before we go. If you're not saved, you'll get saved. If you're backslidden, you'll come back to God. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank You that Jesus is Lord for me and that You raised Him from the dead. And I believe in my heart that You have made me righteous because I'm, I'm confessed with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and You raised Him from the dead. I thank You for bringing me back into union with You if I'm, if I'm because I've been backslidden and you are greater than anybody. God bless you and have a good day. If you're ever in the Linden, Alabama area, we invite you to worship with us at Cornerstone Church. For more information and other resources, visit our website at cornerstonechurchforyou.com. Hi, I'm Pastor Rob Wynn from Cornerstone Church in Linden, Alabama. I wanted to tell you today what our service times are so you can come. It's at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning and at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. We wanted to reveal our heart to you, which is that we love Linden and we love Marengo County and the areas around us. And we have a message that we want to get out. It's a message of hope, help, and healing. And if you'd like to find out more about us, you can find out on our website, which is cornerstonechurchforyou.com. You can find out directions to our church, the address. You can find out what we believe. You can hear messages that Rose and I have preached. And you can give if you'd like to give. But most of all, I wanted to make sure that I invited you that no matter who you are, we want to have you come and be a part of Cornerstone Church in Linden.